Watching Governor Gretchen Whitmer bring us the very latest from the state's emergency operations center. As she has said, we need to take this seriously. Someone died today. A week ago, we had two cases. Now we have over 100. This story continues to break every single hour with new information. Today, the state says we have seen another jump in the number of cases. We are up to 110 people who are sick with 34 hospitalized. Local auto plants are temporarily closing as the big three and the UAW struggle to stop the spread there. The United States and Canada have agreed to restrict travel across America's northern border. And we have posted additional information related to the coronavirus crisis, and you can see it on the crawl at the bottom of your screen. And as we said late this afternoon, Beaumont Health shared information about the first person to die from coronavirus here in Michigan. Local force Mara McDonald was there. She joins us from Southfield. And Mara, we knew this could happen, but it is still a somber milestone. Karen, here's the situation. We got out of a briefing with Beaumont, and here is what they can tell us about the gentleman who passed away this morning. They say he was in his 50s. He had an underlying health condition. They will not detail what that underlying health condition is, and he died this morning at one of the Beaumont facilities in Wayne County. In addition, Beaumont's chief of infection prevention is putting out a call to the public tonight. He asks that you listen. Testing facilities are being overrun. I want to be clear that not everyone with COVID-19 symptoms, which includes fever, cough, and shortness of breath, needs to be tested. What I'm calling this is the pivot. COVID-19 is in our community. It's with us. It's not just something that lives overseas anymore. It's in our backyard. And so a lot of patients who are experiencing relatively mild symptoms, who don't have underlying medical conditions, who are young and otherwise healthy, frankly, do not need to be tested. Back here live simply because their treatment course would be essentially staying home for two weeks. That is the what the governor recommended today, that is what Beaumont is recommending today. And when asked here at the hospital how many hospitalized COVID-19 cases they have, they tell us that that number is a moving target. But at this point, they'd say they have dozens. We're live in Southfield at the Beaumont Admin. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Mara. We'll check back with you tonight at 5. Meantime, Dr. Frank McGeorge is tracking the virus here in Michigan today. He happens to be home and he shared his reaction to the death and what we need to know going forward. It is, of course, a tragic turn that there's now officially a COVID-19 death in Michigan. But honestly, it should come as absolutely no surprise. Just using the known 2% case fatality rate, that means you would expect one death for every 50 infections. And we have 80 documented as of today. So a death was likely. Now going forward, this is a really important point in time, again, for everyone to realize how serious this is and how important it is for everyone to take measures to reduce spread and especially protect vulnerable people. All right, thank you, Doc. We'll be checking back with you later. Meantime, Detroit's big three automakers are closing plants to stop the spread of coronavirus among its workers. The UAW came to an agreement to improve safety precautions last night but that didn't seem to be enough for many workers. Let's get to business editor Rod Maloney. He is live in Warren this afternoon with the very latest. Rod. Yeah, good afternoon, Karen. You know, this is a situation that has building, been building for the last week. The UAW pressuring the domestic three very hard to get them to shut down production. They have been reluctant to do so for a number of reasons. But today, uh, things really got a little bit out of hand because in Michigan Truck, they had a uh, finding of a positive case of coronavirus in the plant. So they closed the plant, started cleaning it. As things went on during the day, the workforce, the rank and file have become angrier and angrier. They've been angry for a week now. And so finally the pressure came to a head and the car companies decided it was time to close their plants, which is what they did earlier this afternoon. So we were here at the Warren Truck Assembly Plant this afternoon, and this is what uh, at least one of the workers had to say to us. Well, yes, I am, because uh, we'll be safe at home. Yeah. And have you been worried about your safety in the plant for the last few days? Uh, yes. Tell me why. How? How, how have you been concerned? Because it's too many people in the gatherings. Yes. 
so they're very happy to be out of the plant. Now, this particular plant was going to be closing later in the month anyway until the end of the summer because they're doing a changeover for a new vehicle here. And so a lot of the workers here have been saying, well, why didn't they just close it? They know they're going to be closing anyway. In the meantime, there are going to be a lot of people in these plants who don't work in the plants, but they're going to be cleaning crews because the car companies say they're going to be doing everything to disinfect the entire building and then go to work on a protocol on how to reopen these plants down the line so that the rank and file uh, do not feel unsafe as they work. Reporting live in Warren, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, some major automotive news today. We appreciate it, Rod. A lot to talk about, so we will join you back here at 5 o'clock. Another development in the coronavirus pandemic, the U.S.-Canada border will close to non-essential traffic. Both President Trump and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau say shipping and supply chains will not be impacted. At this hour, the Ambassador Bridge and Detroit-Windsor Tunnel remain open. The Detroit-Windsor Tunnel tells us it will release details on when it will close when that information is available. Again, a developing story. Meantime, the president has been promising financial help to ease the crisis, but it's not making investors feel any more confident. Take a look. Markets have been plunging all day long. Trading was actually stopped for the fourth time this month when it fell too far. We did see a recovery yesterday. It didn't stick. Take a look at where the Dow Jones landed, down some 1,300 points. Today, President Trump basically declared war on the virus as he invoked the Defense Protection Act to help with possible medical supply shortages. The 1950 wartime law authorizes the president to take extraordinary action to force industries to expand production of equipment needed for national security. The law could be used to speed up production of things like ventilators, respirators, and other protective gear for healthcare workers. A thing like this has never been requested, and it's never — we've never had to even think in terms of these numbers. But we need millions of masks, and all of that will be ordered. We need respirators. We need uh, ventilators is a big thing because it's a complex piece of equipment. So we have a lot of ventilators, but we're going to be ordering more. The president also announced that the Department of Housing and Urban Development is providing immediate relief to renters and homeowners by suspending all foreclosures and evictions until the end of April. Seniors counting on Meals on Wheels deliveries in Macomb County may experience a slight delay today and days to come as the Macomb Community Action Division races to execute a Plan B. Paula Tutman working that story from Clinton Township for us where all Meals on Wheels volunteers have been sidelined because of the threat of the coronavirus. Paula. Karen, let's put this in perspective. I was in this community a few months ago when they were desperate for volunteers. Push pause on that right now. Right now, county staffers are being pulled from everywhere they can possibly be pulled, from desk jobs as well as other jobs, so that they can staff these trucks, feed seniors, and also flatten this virus. This morning, organized chaos as about 30 Macomb County employees take on the task of what 900 volunteers normally do. Got it. Heavy. Feeding seniors and shut-ins with Meals on Wheels. It's going to be all the hot. We're going in the temporary hot bags that we got. Because many of the Meals on Wheels volunteers are 60 years old and older, they are at risk for the coronavirus, and so they are being sidelined. The county in general is helping to pitch in. Right now, we have two staff from the Juvenile Justice Center who came over here this morning to help us drive. It's an all-hands-on-deck situation for our staff, but we want to make sure that we contain it just to staff so we reduce the exposure risk. Many of the county personnel who are pinch-hitting today have never delivered meals before. I'm the jumper. <laughs> so what's a jumper? I'm basically, what my job is, is I'm gonna take the meals up to the door, knock, leave them there, and go. Make sure they get them, though. I think it's a new adventure. As my husband said, consider it a new adventure. They're learning the streets they're not familiar with. It's the corner one. Yeah. It's the very corner one that the address kind of faded out. And the well-oiled machine that generally takes about two hours to complete today will take all day. This is going to be a nine or 10 hour route. This is the contingency plan to make sure we can get all 1700 meals out to seniors in need in Macomb County. You have a great day. Thank you very much. All right, have a good one, hon. Thank you, bye. Long term, it's not something we can financially afford. Um, this is a much more expensive model to use staff all day and to have two staff on a truck. 
Um, but we really are committed to keeping Macomb County seniors safe and by limiting the number of people that are they're interacting with will help keep both their seniors and our staff safe. Okay, so I'm looking at some of these return trucks. I only see five of them. There may be a few more, but that means at least 10 are probably still out. This is a very, very long day. What can you do to help? What the county is saying is if you know of a local food pantry, support that pantry so that these folks don't come online for Meals on Wheels and they can continue to service these 1,700 people they already have on their rolls. Karen? All right, that does make sense. Thank you very much, Paula. And our coverage continues for the next two hours. Coming up at 5 o'clock, Helby Hank is going to sit down with Michigan's Attorney General to talk about those scams connected to the coronavirus and what you need to know to keep you and your family safe. Then at 6, we're going to talk about daycares. Many of those facilities have stayed open as schools close, so we're trying to answer as many of your questions as possible. We'll have those stories and more when you join us at 5 and 6. Let's bring in a little sunshine into our day today. Uh, it was nice out there, the rain moving into the area, but we've got sun in the forecast later, right, Ben? Yeah, Karen, we got to wait till the weekend to get it, but at least in the short term, the stuff that's out there is light, and this is going to be just liquid tonight, starting to move up towards 96, and this eventually will get, I think, as far north as about in 59. A lot of the north zone is going to miss out on it, but do expect to see those showers around through the evening. Now fast forward to tomorrow. Things get a little bit more rocky as that marginal risk for severe weather has pushed into our south and west zone. This is for tomorrow night. So coming up, we'll look at our storm chances, time it out and see what time all this gets out of here in time for a dry weekend. Karen. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you, Ben. Still ahead, 50 million reasons to believe romance is not on life support during the COVID-19 crisis. Plus, how some future couples might go old school to get to know each other. Also, another way to reach out to friends and share a movie. This suggestion is definitely high tech, but it could also be pretty fun. Up first, Joe Biden's reaction to a primary sweep and what we are hearing from the Bernie Sanders campaign this afternoon. If you have concerns about the spread of coronavirus, here's something you can do today to help. Clean commonly touched areas in your home and office with a disinfecting cleaner. This includes your phone. Less virus means less transmission. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge.